Okay, so pay close attention to the way the sphincter clenches and unclenches in this video. When you have exhaust coming out of a thrust nozzle, the variable size of the sphincter on the end of that thrust nozzle is sort of like a transmission in a car. And there's this really interesting effect that happens where depending on the surrounding pressure, if you're at very high altitude, very low altitude, or in space, you need a different size sphincter on your rocket, on your jet engine there. And that's why the engines on the space shuttle are really big. They have a really big opening. They have a gaping sphincter on the space shuttle versus the rockets that take it up to space or have a much smaller opening because they're operating at higher pressure and atmosphere. So these variable size sphincter rocket engines, jet engines, are an attempt to create a single type of engine that works in different kinds of environments, different kinds of air pressure. There is an alternative to this traditional type of thrust nozzle, and it's called the aerospike engine. And it looks like this. And it doesn't have a sphincter. It doesn't have a drive cone. It doesn't have the thrust nozzle in the same way. Instead, the exhaust gas flows down the spike and the ambient air pressure compresses and constricts it down to uh, a similar shape as the exhaust that you would see coming out of a traditional engine. And the difference is you don't need more than one engine for different altitudes. The space shuttle engines don't work efficiently in the atmosphere and atmospheric rocket engines don't work efficiently in space. And this is exactly why you see so many rocket engine designs that have multiple stages because the different kinds of engines that work at different altitudes. And this is a huge problem because many of those stages are non-reusable and we don't have a single stage to orbit launch vehicle that's never that's never been developed but it's sort of the engineering dream of aerospace technology today but an airspike engine works efficiently in both situations because the compression automatically changes if you're in space it just goes out the whole back the whole back of the rocket is the the, the thrust n nozzle basically and then when you're in the atmosphere it's compressed down for the atmosphere and it does that just automatically as a result of the pressure. So it's a much more efficient and more versatile engine. It's pretty exciting technology.